Turkish Airlines presents Business Africa. Hello and welcome to this new episode of Business Africa. I'm your host, Dea Yoka. Here are this week's headlines. After experiencing an eventful year in 2023, 2024 looks equally challenging for African economies. In this episode, we explore the major economic challenges that lie ahead and the sectors which are pillars to sustainable growth. On the threshold of the new year, let's review the cooperation between the United States of America and Africa. In 2023, the sites signed nearly 550 trade and investment agreements. And finally, we'll head to Congo, where despite electrification efforts and the construction of dams in rural areas, access to electricity remains limited to support local economic development. African economies were put to the test in 2023 after experiencing a slowdown due to the COVID-19 pandemic and being impacted by the war in Ukraine and its consequences. What does 2024 have in store? Will the almost endemic inflation phenomenon persist? In which sectors should one invest? Here are the details. In 2023, African financial markets were turbulent, marked by the adverse impact of COVID-19 and economic challenges including rising inflation and debt-related hurdles. Some stock market indices and currencies experience a decline, but the outlook for 2024 looks positive, with growth forecast at 4% in sub-Saharan Africa, according to the IMF. Nevertheless, uncertainties persist, with the depreciations expected in several countries. According to the Economic Intelligence Unit, most African countries are expected to see their currencies depreciated against the dollar, notably Egypt, Sudan, Ethiopia, Angola and Zimbabwe, while the CFA franc zone in Central and West Africa, linked to the euro, should see their currencies appreciate in 2024. Despite these challenges, opportunities are emerging in key sectors such as construction, transport, logistics and the mining industry, which should maintain a higher momentum thanks to strong demand in high export prices in 2024. Africa now finds itself at a crossroad and therefore has the opportunity to redefine its economy thanks to its resources and human potential. However, achieving development goals requires African countries to pursue and improve their economic stabilization policies. What is the outlook for these economies as 2024 dawns? To get an answer to this question, we joined by Rabah Araski, the former vice president of the African Development Bank. Welcome to Business Africa, sir. In 2023, stock market indices of South Africa and Kenya declined. Nigeria's, Kenya's and South Africa's currencies lost value. If you were to make predictions, what are the upcoming challenges for these economies? One can clearly feel that these three economies are suffering from a loss of confidence from the markets, a trend towards devaluation. It is very difficult to turn the tides with reserves of change being depleted in most countries. From a budgetary perspective, these countries are constrained because they have high levels of both external and internal debts, so they are really limited in terms of maneuverability. Despite structurally attractive markets, because they are significant economies, where internal demands is evolving significantly, make them attractive for foreign direct investments. However, given the macroeconomics of these countries, there is still doubt about their ability to cope. Therefore, it is hoped that the balance between good macroeconomic policies and structural policies can put them on a more promising path than what it is currently seen. It is clear that Africa has the potential to reshape its economic landscape. In your view then, what are key sectors to achieve the continent's development goals? There is undoubtedly a clear priority for me, which was access to electricity. 
Still, one in two Africans does not have access to electricity. And it is absolutely crucial that the governance of this sector be restored in countries like South Africa. It is very clear. Another sector that interests me is finance. In countries like Kenya, where mobile digital payment methods have been allowed to flourish, there is an unprecedented growth in trade, investment, and innovation. So I believe that there are still countries in West Africa and elsewhere where progress has been made on these issues, but not enough. Faced with double-digit inflation, countries like Egypt and Nigeria are seeking solutions. What strategies could be adapted to overcome the challenges this year? However, all of this is once again a question of confidence from Nigerians, Egyptians, in relation to local politics and anchoring inflation. We need to implement macro policies that should instill a kind of stability, but there is also the confidence of external markets at stake. I believe that the experience of better devaluations, because that is the direction we are heading, and to benefit from this devaluation will revive these economies. It is also essential to reform these sectors where devaluation should compress imports. Imports, in turn, allow for expansion of domestic production. Often, the experience we have had in devaluation in Africa, that these devaluations are not accompanied by a surge in local production because they are protected sectors, rentier sectors. I believe that if we are heading towards a devaluation, it must be clear that we should expect social consequences. But it is also necessary that this time we undertake a process of demonopolization so that it's not only the population that bear the burden. Sir Rabba Hareski, thank you for your insight. Africa is world's future, the U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris said last March. As the African population continues to grow and its economic potential expands, the United States have shown a strong willingness to forge closer ties with the continent in 2023. In 2023, the United States attained record trade deals with Africa, totaling $14.2 billion. This is part of a dynamic improvement in cooperation with the signing of nearly 515 new trade and investment agreements, marking a significant 67% increase over 2022 in terms of number and value according to the White House. Historically focused on development aid and resource extraction, U.S. economic engagement with Africa is evolving under the Biden administration. Experts say the transition began at the USA-Africa summit in 2022, where Washington pledged to invest $55 billion over three years in Africa, signaling a new strategic direction. Lincoln and Biden. Um, I think Joe Biden and Anthony Blinken are trying to change the mindset of Americans, both in government and in the private sector. Moreover, I believe that the geopolitical challenges facing the United States, Biden recognizes the importance of having real partners in Africa, both economically and in terms of security. Even if this new strategy is attributed to the American desire to counter Chinese influence in Africa, many believe it also shows a desire to distinguish itself from the European approach. Biden, you say que. Biden knows that France has a lot of baggage with Africa, and he doesn't want that to be an obstacle to achieving his goals. That's why he's trying to distinguish himself from the approach of France and other European countries. Since the U.S.-Africa summit, the U.S.'s vice president, secretary of state, and secretary of the treasury have visited Africa. While these trips are no substitutes for lasting economic opportunities, the belief is that they indicate a desire to establish a framework for sustainable growth. Despite pipelines and high-voltage power lines not being far from villages in the oil rich region of Pointe-Noire, the electricity deficit persists, causing heavy losses to local businesses. Gas flaring in the skies of the Republic of Congo. But just nearby is a power station designed to supply electricity from Bundi in the Kuelu departmental region. Despite the strong hydrological potential and major electrification and water distribution projects, 
financed to the tune of some $270 million, rural populations here have no access to drinking water nor electricity. We don't understand. There is no electricity here, even though there is a base over there. To get water from the borehole, I have to take even half a day to leave my home and come and fetch the water. They should at least have put pipes in so that we could get water quickly. 66% of Congo's urban population have access to electricity, compared with just 15% in rural areas. This inequality is the result of budget under-execution, according to a study carried out by an NGO coalition publish what you pay. 82% of the projects listed have not seen a start, so there's a huge gap between what was planned and what was actually happening in the field. The coalition of NGOs involved in monitoring public investments has issued a series of recommendations, including the revival of abandoned National Rural Energy Agency projects, as well as the accessibility of information relating to public finances. That wraps this episode of Business Africa. You can watch it again on africanews.com and on all our platforms. I wish you a wonderful new year. Bye for now. Business Africa was presented by Turkish Airlines.